Hola, good evening. Welcome to En Casa con la Plaza. My name is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. En Casa con la Plaza is our virtual programming. This uh, We've been at it for two years now. Uh, of course, during the lockdown, uh, bringing the best of Latino history, art, and culture from our home to yours. I'm here at my home today. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Union Pacific Foundation, the Institute for Museum and Library Services. Let me give you an update of what's going on at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. We've been open now full time, uh, regular hours. Just to let you know, starting next week, we'll be open Wednesday through Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I forgot Friday. No, I got it there. Anyway, from 12 to 5. Uh, of course, our admission is free of charge. Also, La Plaza Cocina, our newest museum uh, dedicated to Mexican food is also open right across the street from La Plaza on the backside on Spring Street from 12 to 5, Monday through Sunday. We're closed on, we'll be closed starting next week on Monday and Tuesday. All right, uh, let's see. Also, all of our exhibitions are open. Uh, LA starts here, Calle Principal, Patriotism and Conflict, Fighting for Country y Comunidad, which talks about the Chicano Moratorium plus Latino service people who served during the military during those times. Uh, and then our most recent exhibition, L, uh, L.A. Memo, Chicana Chicano Artists from 1972 to 1989. And we'll be talking to one of the artists who has been, who is featured in that exhibition, which uh, we've been, uh, which is part of the, a lot of the pieces are from the ultimate art collection. All right, uh, let's see, algo mas. If you've joined us on Zoom, please use the chat feature. Uh, let us know who you are, where you're viewing from. Make comments, ask questions like Monica Mendoza has already reached out to us telling them it's an awesome exhibition and we have to agree. Uh, if you're on Facebook, we have the comment section. Go ahead and, uh, and let us know who you are, where you're viewing from and, and any comments or questions and we'll probably take them after the, the art talk that we're going to have with our guest for tonight. And speaking of, born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Eloy Torres. And my apologies for in the in the little JPEG that we showed, the little flyer, we misspelled his last name. It's T-O-R-R-E-Z, not T-O-R-R-E-S-O. Our apologies. But he, no apologies here, he's a portrait artist, muralist, and art instructor. His oil paintings and works on paper have been exhibited in galleries and museums throughout the United States, Mexico, and in Europe. His murals range from the realistic photo montages of the Hollywood elite to social political works depicting Chicano and Mexican American history. He's also a master of portraiture. For during this time as an artist, he's combined realism, surrealism, and synthetism to produce allegories of human psychology and experience. And I grabbed that from the internet. I, I can't come up with these fancy words myself. But let's get started with this conversation and art talk. Please join us, Eloy Torres. Hello, Abelardo. Hola, a... Eloy. How are you? Nice to see you guys since the, uh, since the opening, I guess, uh, again. Yeah, we had the it opening. It was a great opening, huh? It was, it was a fantastic yeah. opening. We had like the, the cream of the crop of Chicana Chicano artists uh, with us, uh, ex of course, the time frame that uh, that was depicted that is depicted in the exhibition covers a lot of the artists that are still on the scene today producing incredible work uh, but it was not only it's not only it was not only on the walls but also that night featured a lot of the artists in person and so yes it was a great uh, exhibit that, there yeah it was, it was a lot of fun um, well so how, how should we start this uh, Sure. What Why don't you tell us a little about? Pretend that uh, that uh, we don't know who Eloy Torres is, and just tell us a little bit about your background, uh, uh, biographical, of course, and then how you got into art. Art. Um, well, I was um, I, like you said, I was born in Al uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, I think my first, well, my first, obviously, honestly, my first exposure to art was, you know, through the church. Uh, family going to church and uh, noticing the uh, artworks, the Stations of the Cross and the sculptures and then being inquisitive and wondering who did those. And um, as I got a little bit older, you start to 
realize who the, some of these artists were. And I, I had a cousin who was a very good uh, draftsman. And uh, my grandmother used to, uh, when we, we would go visit her, she lived in a little pueblito outside of Albuquerque called uh, Punta de Agua. And, uh, and, uh, and so we, uh, when we would visit her, she would always have a lot of his drawings exhibited on the wall. So that got me a little bit like, um, you know, when you're a kid and you're young, a little bit like, well, he does magic with a pencil and, and on paper and he draws horses and mountains and snow-capped mountains and uh, little scenes of New Mexico, Punta de Agua, Manzano, Mountain Air, all those areas, right? And so, of course, that, that got me a little intrigued and interested and, you know, and a little competitive because, you know, it's like maybe grandma will put some of my drawings up on her wall at some point, too. So it kind of started that way, you know, when you're a kid and kind of uh, inquisitive, trying to figure out stuff and what, what you want to do, what you're interested in. Simple as that. Yeah. It, so, so it was to kind of impress your family. Like you said, a little bit of rivalry there, but yeah, uh, and, and, and grandma's attention, I guess you know. Yeah. She was she was an interesting person because back in those days, uh, you know, in those days it was the, the wood burning stove. She'd go out in the morning, chop the wood, bring it in, and uh, I remember when we were really young visiting her, because uh, from Albuquerque to the little town that she lived in, which is maybe five or six families, right, and um. It was a magical experience. So we'd, we'd get there and she made sure that the house was warm in the winter. You bring the firewood in, start the fire, warm up the place. And uh, uh, yeah, just an intriguing person. So I, I guess sub limited subconsciously, uh, I kind of wanted some acknowledgement, I guess. That's nice. Uh, so when did you start actually putting was it in, in school or at home that you you worked with with pencils or with crayons or or what was well, you know it, it it started with the comic books you know just looking at comic books learning your anatomy from the uh superman the batman marvel comic book characters and starting from that first and then oh I, I, well actually the way it kind of started another thing too because it, it's interesting talking about this because you kind of flash back, you know, it's like trying to remember how it all started. Um, obviously, you know, at, at, at the home in Albuquerque, you know, there were all these images, religious images always on the walls, right? And so um, you're looking at these images and you're, th you're thinking, how do you get that expression? Like this, this image that this artist did of an apostle apostle or Christ or whatever and they have this like exalted thing inner inner kind of thing going on and and that was intriguing it's like how do you do that how do you how do you draw a face but go deep you know go deeper in into I don't know soul I, I don't know whatever you want to call it you know that's it's deep it's it's it goes deeper than just a likeness a physical likeness of somebody so that was always kind of intriguing and then of course the comic books pop culture um um things of that nature and uh yeah basically yeah so, so we i could see you know in, in the your your artwork it's it's either on a small scale smaller scale with your paintings and, and drawings mm -hmm. or on your large scale murals it's it's people it's portraiture it's it's not just like you say the likeness but you the 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 personality the 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 soul the the it, it comes through uh and the the your use of the term exaltation is is pretty fitting because it's not just you know regular portraiture lifelike it exudes uh personality uh passion uh grandeur and, and and so I could see the the connection between comic books because comic books do the do the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so and then from there, um, my dad, I, like I was always into art. It was mostly trying to, um, like I said, maybe I can get on grandma's wall at some point, right? Um, and then at, my my father had work in Albuquerque, and so the company he was working for went out of business. So we moved to California, and then when I we ended up in Barstow, and of all places in Barstow, I met uh, what I like to call my guru, my, my, my spiritual art 
guru teacher. And um, um, so I, I pretty much gravitated towards him. Uh, uh, I met him, I, was, I, I had an art teacher. I was taking art classes at the Barstow High and my teacher encouraged me to go with her to some classes at the Barstow Junior College because she very was very high on, uh, she was very impressed with the, the professor there. And so I, I said, okay, I'll, I'll go. And I, I went and I was very, um, I was very impressed with, with this person. He was very charismatic. Uh, and then, but besides all of those, all of that, he could draw and he could really paint. And uh, the first thing I'm thinking is, is where am I gonna meet somebody in Barstow that I can learn from like this, this person? And so that, that was, I think that's really kind of what started the whole thing of really being serious about wanting to be an artist. Right. And could you share the name of the, the person that you're? Yeah, his name was uh, Jim Savoy. Okay, Jim Savoy. He's he's passed on. It's 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 yeah. It's 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 kind of a drag that he's passed on because I I've always wanted to reconnect with him as as the years go by, but it's it's been a little bit difficult. Um, but well, that's that's the way things go in life, you know. I was I was hoping to reconnect with him, um, but he. He's the one who helped me um, put a portfolio together to apply at, at Otis Art Institute at the time when it was near MacArthur Park. And so he pretty much helped me put that together. And, and from Barstow, I, I, I got to Otis and I, I knew nothing about art schools. I knew, I, I, didn't, I didn't even know where to start looking, you know, which art school could I apply to. But he had some, some students of his that had uh, applied to Otis and, uh, and uh, he, he seemed to be thinking, uh, he, he, and he got a very good response from his students about Otis at the time. Well, great. And, and so what was your experience like at Otis? Oh, it was, it was um, well, I'm coming from Barstow. It's kind of like, it's a tiny little town, you know? And so I get to LA and it's, it's a completely different world, a completely different experience. Um, um, I mean, just simple thing like driving you know you got to learn to be assertive and and, and 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 not be so like you know when you stop in a small town like barstow you're like polite you can go no you can go you know, no no you go first no dude you go <laughs> and in LA it's it's like zoom 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 so you're like i had to it took me it took me a little bit of time to get into the pace of la and i really like what i, I think one of the things that i really did like about being at otis is it was just the diversity you know I, I like I I I I met Carrie Marshall there, Ulysses Jenkins, uh, 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 artists from like uh, Arkansas, Wisconsin, all over, all part of the all different parts of the United States, and that was really that was so so much so exciting, you know, and 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 fun, and uh, just kind of opened up a whole new way of looking at things and, 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 and trying to learn how to navigate through LA at the same time. So yeah. it was pretty exciting. Yeah, and, and what was your age at this time? I was, when I first got to Otis, I was 22. Okay. 21, 22. I think I just turned 22. All right. Yeah. So, so what happened next? Did you graduate from, from Otis? Uh, well, see what happened when I got to Otis, I mean, to be really honest, I, I, I had such, I felt so prepared when I got to Otis because my teacher, Jim Savoy, besides being a really good teacher, uh, he, had, he had, the door, I can hear the music. He, he, had, he had prepared us pretty well. And so when I, when I got to Otis, I didn't, I didn't, there was an interesting transition going on at Otis. Because when I got to Otis, I was expecting it to be, um, there was a thing going on where conceptual art was coming in, performance art, mm -hmm. video art, and I was kind of thrown for a loop because I had never been exposed to any of those art forms. So um, there was there seemed to be two kind of schools at the, at the time, the, the, like the traditional side, and then the, the the more contemporary or new way of creating art forms, techno technological advancement stuff that was being incorporated into the arts. And so there was this thing going on that, you know, painting is dead, painting is mm. the past. And, and so I, I got a little bit 
I was a little bit confused about it all. And at the same time too, there was, cause I always liked music when I was, excuse me, when I was a kid. Um, and there was this whole new thing with the music that was happening at the time. The punk music scene was coming in. And so um, I really kind of like shifted a little bit from the art and I really started getting into the music um, because it was an interesting challenge to, to learn how to, put a song together how do you how do you how do you how do you make a how do you compose a song make it work and which is which is what I had kind of with the intriguing thing in being at art school with Jim so uh, with with Savoy at, uh, at Barstow it was that whole idea of something fresh learning something new and when I got to Otis I was still kind of discovering myself like okay I'm this guy from New Mexico we moved to Barstow I wasn't exposed to much of anything in Barstow. You know, it's like, it's, it's, I mean, you turn the radio on and it's all like Christian programming, no FM radio, even rock and roll. Most of, most of the rock and roll music that I was exposed to music at the time was through friends who, who knew way more about music than I did or, or who, who, you know, and, and I kind of hung out with them. And so by the time I got to Otis, I, I felt like, well, I kind of know a lot of these things in the traditional sense in the I, I guess in the more other aspect of exploring art the music was because it's performance you know you get out there you write a song you work what I liked about the music thing is that you collaborate with two or three other people and that was fresh and new because being an artist it's especially when, when I was at the junior college I was so focused and I drew you know part of the thing is like you do three sketches a day in your sketchbook because you got to fill it up because you, you know uh, by the end of the quarter that, that sketchbook has got to be filled up to get a C. Mm -hmm. And if it's good, you can get an A or B or whatever. So of course I was kind of grandma again, but with Mitt, Mitt Jim so boy, I wanted to impress. You know that's just me. So I was very always very disciplined, kind of nerdy about it, right? So every class that he had, I was there trying to learn to draw from the model. It was, it was difficult. So, and I think when I got to Otis, it was this looking for some other way, fresh way to express myself and, 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 and not being so lonely because all of these activities you do uh, by yourself on your own. And it's a, a lonely activity. And, um, and the cool thing about collaborating with other people is you create something together and you get feedback from another person. You know, you come up with a part the other person comes up with this idea and you're like, yeah, that, that's cool, that works. And so, and also I think at that time, being fresh here in LA, I'm like, well, who am I? I'm trying to figure all of these things out about where I fit in the world, you know, because 22, 23, coming from a place like Barstow to a big city of LA, it's a little overwhelming, a little confusing. So um, I didn't know what it was at, at that moment, what it is, what, what is it that's really, I'm passionate about to paint. I know I like to paint people. I like to paint human beings. I like to kind of dig in, into who they are and get a little deeper. But um, I wasn't, I just felt like I just got to live a little bit. I got to like explore the city, do music, do gigs, play live. It's, 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 and kind of get out of your shyness in a way, because the thing about performing is that you get up there and you're scared as heck, you know, cause like you don't want to screw up. You don't want to mess up, but it's that adrenaline. That's really fun. And I think I kind of needed to go through that and I really embraced it and I really got into it, but still in the back of my head, it's, it's, I felt like I, I'm putting so much into the music and not so much into the art. So there was this kind of conflict a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and as time went on, I, 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 I and it's all, it's never ending. You're always looking for for what it is that you you're going to invest hours into to painting, and, and and at the moment you're really into it, and then sometimes you're like, so what? <laughs> who, who really cares? You know what I mean? And and so th those kind of things. But I I've learned to balance the music and the art because I paint, I'll paint for four or five, six hours and the guitar is always there and it's, it's not going anywhere. I pick it up, I'll write something. And I, and I found that uh, it actually, they kind of feed each other, uh -huh. especially lyrically. If I'm trying to put lyrics together for a song, it's, 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 it's like, okay, what am I going to say in this song? And I, and then I think 
this, when I do that, I'm thinking the same thing in my paintings. What am I going to say with this painting? What am I, what I, you know what I mean? So they kind of like writing lyrics to music is, I think is, is helping me to look even deeper into my subject matter. All right. Just a couple of questions. Uh, yeah. What time frame are we talking about? You know, your, your oldest years, you're, you're getting into music. Oh. Um, I, I, when did I get into Otis? I think I got into Otis around 77. And I left like maybe two and a half years la uh, later. I, I got a BFA and I started working on, on my MFA, but uh, I, I was a little bit bored with art school, a little bit. I had gotten a little bit bored. I just wanted to, to get out. And I, I got a job at, um, with Brockman Gallery Productions um, um, CETA programs were out at the time, were happening at the time. And so I, I got a job restoring murals. And then I, I had an opportunity to work with Kent Twitchell on one mural he was working with. Um, and then I, then I, I got a job at South Al Graphics. I was an artist in residence there for a little while. So uh, yeah, so that's what I did. And then actually through the Brockman Gallery Productions, um, I had I met Glenna Boltock and she was the director of the Citywide Murals Program. Mm -hmm at the time. And um, I expressed to her that um, I would love to do a mural. If she could find me a wall some, somewhere, I'd love to do it. And she came up about a, a few weeks later. She goes, I have two walls in Hollywood. And so um, I did my first mural in Hollywood. Shall we start with an image? And yeah, I just, that's right. but before we do that, one last okay. question. Did, did you actually perform with a band or so? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we had, we were called, we were first called, uh, there was the Talking Heads at the time, and 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 yeah, yeah. Talking Heads were a really art school kind of band because they were from Rhode Island and they were artists that became musicians, and they had some really interesting lyric uh, lyrics and the way David Byrne put the lyrics together and the music was very intriguing to a lot of us. And you know, in art school, you meet a lot of closet musicians, musicians and artists. You know, they're actually I, I started a group there, and it was with this Filipino uh, guy. Uh, his name was Jim Abuan, and uh, and he was more into the conceptual art, so I really didn't know what to think of him. And he was a little bit of a of an aloof kind of guy, and uh, he looked like a he was like a good looking, dark brown James uh, 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 James Dean looking guy. He was always walking around with the leather jacket, right? And so I had a studio uh, on Seventh and Westmoreland near MacArthur Park, and he had a studio next to me, and I plug in my guitar loud sometimes, and I just crank it and play. He knocked on the door and I go, oh boy, I'm too loud. And he goes, would you like to jam <laughs> at some point? And so I got to, we got together with him and then we found the drummer who uh, was originally from Detroit. And then we call ourselves the Street Talkers, you know, kind of a little play on the, uh, that was the first name. And then we changed our, and we performed. We were doing quite a few gigs. So we, that was more like a punk incarnation. But of course we were, we always had our ears with the, uh, with the new wave stuff, music that was coming out. And, and, and in actuality, when I did go to art school, there was a lot of bands that came out of a small school. There was about six or seven bands. And like I said, you know, artists and musicians, kind of the, the you know, I mean, a, a lot of very well-known uh, musicians went to art school. And, and so uh, it was easy to, to get a group together. And so him and I played quite a bit. And then we, we changed the name to The Rents. And then we changed our name to Western Heroes. So you can kind of get an idea by the names of how we were kind of evolving or trying different things. All right. It was a lot of fun. And at one point we, we had this girl, this gal singer who was very, uh, very dynamic and very theatrical. And, and, uh, and uh, we were doing pretty well with her, um, but it, it just somehow it just didn't last. But it, the music still is with you. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm always writing. I, 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 I write every day because I like, like I'm working on a project right now, and it's very labor intensive, right? And so, you can only do this, you know, where you're labor intensive and you're focused for so many hours, and then there's a part of the brain that needs something fresh to come in because it's like part, whatever part of the brain that is, it's just so saturated. I need just need something new. So the guitar's always there, I'll pick it up. And that's mostly when something interesting and magical kind of happens because you're kind of out of your comfort zone. I, I think we all have kind of comfort zones that we kind of go to in, in 
when we're creating, you know what I mean? Like you get to a point where you go, okay, I know when I, if I paint this and I do this movida, I got it. I've done it before. I know it's going to work. But the interesting thing about when I've been doing this activity, painting for a long period of time, and there's a certain part of the brain that needs just something fresh and new. What's interesting, I'll pick up the guitar and I'm out of my comfort zone because I'm kind of in that weird state, you know, where I haven't really like adjusted yet into, okay, I'm going to adjust and I'm going to go do my go-to thing on the music because I know this works. And so I'll just record the best things that happen sometimes is at that moment when an idea comes, I'll reference it on my phone. And some of the things that you think are kind of like, like mistakes or screw ups or weird timing things are the things that become the little gems later. Cause that's kind of where you kind of find this subconscious subliminal original something going on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so I'm trying to learn to work with that. And, and, and in fact, like the, uh, um, I, I got together with the guys that have been two years since I have two guys that I that we do music we've been playing since we were back in the 80s right and uh Carlos Carlos and and uh I'm not yeah Chiquis and uh Jose bass the bass and drums and we got together about two three weeks ago and I had a bunch of songs Joe had one song and we just started playing and we didn't really we weren't quite sure of the arrangements where it's okay well just they're just playing them and, and listening back, there's some things in there that at first I thought, no, I don't like that. But the more I listen to it, the more I embrace it and I like it. So now I'm trying to learn, sing the song the way I sang it that day, instead of like maybe going the what I think is the correct way. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, no, you, you, you're trying to keep it as, as raw and fresh as when it was. It, yeah, in a sense. And then, and then when you start singing, you're like, blah, 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 because you're trying to, you're noodling, you're trying to find something, but subconsciously, a word will come out, or, or you're like, okay, what word is that? Okay, blah, 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 I'll say a word, and then, da, 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 and then there's another word, and I'm thinking, subconsciously, I mean, something wants, the song is maybe kind of telling me what to talk about in this particular piece, because these words are coming out, so it's been an interesting way to learn how to work that way, you know? All right. Okay. Oh, anyway. Well, well, let's get it off of the art. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is a, a we're in, in Casa con la Plaza. This well, no, but it is art, right? Music yeah, and art. It's, it's all art. Is. Yes. It's yes. All, all right. Great. So, yeah. so the you, you talk about Glenda, uh, who later became Glenda uh, Avila, Glenda. correct? Glenda okay. Bolsa, so, Avila. So, so a couple uh, uh, gave you a couple walls. So let's talk about this wall right here. Okay, that's the uh, the wall she. Um, she came to me and she goes, uh, I have two walls, a big one and one not so big. And I told her, I like the big one. I like to do the big one. And so um, at that time in Hollywood, it was very dilapidated. It was kind of run down. And so they, they wanted me, they asked if I could come up with something that made reference to uh, the nostalgia of Hollywood, right? Yeah. Can we still see the image? Is it still there? Yeah. Here, I'm going to bring this one up too. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, and so um, I, I came up with, with this idea and it was Marilyn Monroe, Plumford Bogart, Fred Astaire, Betty Davis, James Dean and Clark Gable. And this shot, it's, it's pretty faded. It's when it really started to fade. And it was the first, yeah, this is the beginning. That was the beginning stage of it. Um, it it's the first mural I did. And, uh, and I, I, I got way super ambitious with it. I did it all by myself. Uh, it was, um, uh, if you move on, you can see that I was on the, yeah, I was on the, on the um, scaffolding. And so there was a, a house across the street, an old Victorian home before all this development went on. So I, I would use, I used to um, drive this, uh, roll this uh, swing stage from that across the street onto the, uh, onto the wall every day, every morning. And so that was, that was the first mural that I did. And then after that one, um, I, uh, I did a project at SPARC, Social Public Arts Resource Center. And the idea behind that project is was a portable mural. And I basically it's a mural that could be transported from one area to another, which I guess just could be like a big canvas. I proposed a big canvas and uh, um, I did that project and I was looking for a place to exhibit it. So I went to the Victor Clothing Company because I, I knew at the time that they were receptive to Latino artists, Chicano artists. And so um, 
I met, I met the owner and I proposed to him this idea. And it was a painting, it was called Mural of Muralists. And I had Carlos Almaraz in it, Betty Sarr, Ken Twitchell, and I, I painted myself in it. And we're all under a freeway. And so, um, yeah, he says, yeah, I'd love to show it. And, he, and I showed him the mural I did in Hollywood, the first one. He says, by the way, I have a wall, a south facing wall. My, my, the, my clientele is all Latino. Can you think of somebody that's in the same league as uh, Meryl Monroe, Humphrey Bogart, Fred Astaire, Bed, da Davis, James Diener, Clark Kim? I go, yeah, well, Anthony Quinn, it's kind of a no brainer. And he goes, yeah, perfect. And so he says, can you come up with a design? And, and I said, yeah, yeah, you know, so, and in those days, um, of course you couldn't just log in and find pictures on the internet or whatever. There were those Hollywood shops with photographs, vintage photographs. So I, I did that and I found an image of Anthony Quinn with his arms extended and everybody says, oh, it's Zorba the Greek thing. And I guess maybe it is, but what I found out later is it, it was, I guess he was in a series, uh, I think it was called Man in the City. And I think he played the first Latino mayor in that, in that, in that, in, in that uh, series. So it, it was a TV series? Yeah, from what I understand. And, 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 and what I'm guessing is somebody said, do the Zorba thing and somebody took a picture. And so I used that image uh, for, for the mural. And, um, and so that's kind of how that happened. And I, 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 I drew that up. But I didn't have a background yet. I didn't know. Well, he wanted the Victor Clothing Company marquee on it because it was, it was like he wanted to promote his business, of course. And so, uh, but I didn't know what the background was going to be. And then Frank Romero did a horse and rider mural next to that. And then I didn't quite have the whole composition. But to me, when I saw that horse and rider was built on arcs, you know, the, the neck, the rump, and then the tail. So there were these kind of things going on, right? And then I kept looking, when I was up on the wall, I kept looking across the street and, and the uh, Bradbury building with the big arched door, right? I go, well, there's the arc. I can, if uh, I was looking at Frank Romero's piece going like this, like this, like this, and I thought, if I put an arc in mine, it'll continue that kind of movement. You know what I mean? So I was trying to deal with that, those kind of movements as well as the figure itself. And um, so I, I I put one of the entr entries from the, one of the doors that, that I was looking at, uh, south, uh, north, I mean, uh, looking south, and I put uh, an entrance under each door, uh, under each arm. And then I kind of wanted to make it a little kind of psychedelic, a little inside, outside kind of thing, in your body, outside your body sort of, sort of experience. So. Inside the Victor Clothing, I mean, inside the, uh, the Bradbury building, there's these tiny, there's little diamond shaped like tiles. So I thought if I put those tiles and I blow them up across the street, if you go inside the Bradbury building, you see the little tiles in the Bradbury building and you look out that door and it's almost like looking through a kaleidoscope kind of experiences. It's kind of what I started kind of tripping on and getting into. So it kind of, it, Compose itself as I was there doing it. I mean, I proposed the actual figure at first in the marquee, but I, I'm thinking, no, that's too simple. It needs it needs another element, to, and I want to tie it in with Frank because with Frank's because now it's a challenge. It's an interesting challenge because there's that and there's mine, and I want to see if I can make them work together. You know, make it flow. All right, and and here's the the finished product right here. Yeah, this is uh, one of the most if not the most iconic mural that's uh, that's still there here in uh, in in Los Angeles. So so let's talk about uh, this. Is you know just uh, who's who are you with in this one? Okay, this is this is interesting. Uh, we'll go back to the go back to the first picture. Yeah, Bob Bob, Bob Griegas. I met him when I was doing the uh, the 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 Hollywood mural, and he would come around every day. And he was from Philadelphia. Really int intriguing, interesting guy. Uh, funny. He loved like um, Bukowski. He was into Bukowski, uh, Art Crumb, and just a really kind of kind of different mentality or different from California, right? So we got to be friends, and he's a pretty damn good illustrator, really good drawer. And I hired him to help me work on the uh, the uh, Anthony Quinn mural, and uh, so there we are, two guys. 
And uh, when I first did it, uh, when I quoted a price for the mural, I realized that I had not investigated all my costs as I should have, because it was, when I did the first mural in Hollywood, there was, it was basically, I did it for hardly nothing. I just, it was my first mural, the, the one in Hollywood. So I did it because I wanted the exposure and, you know, and, and, and it worked because after that one, this one came along. So going from hardly any money, I, I'm trying to figure out, well, what do I charge for this, for this piece? And I realized that I didn't quite charge enough and I was locked into a contract. So you see that little swing stage? It's called a swing stage at the top. Yeah. Yeah. That I ended up buying that for like $1,500 because to rent one would have cost, would have been too expensive. I would have run out of money within the like four or five months. <laughs> and I just wanted to make sure that I, my hands were not going to be tied into doing something that I felt good about after it's done. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I ended up buying it. I owned it for, for a period of time, but it was one of those where it's a hand cranker. You know, you get, a, you get a guy on one side and then the other side and you do this. <laughs> so of course, you know, when you're young, it's fun, you know, and you get into it and, and you're like, Okay, dude, you're on that side, I'm on this side. Let's go for it. Let's see who can, you know, and, and we and kind of like whoever cranks the fastest, the swing stage goes this way or that way, you know. But these days, forget it. I'm thinking like, I would never do that again. And then being in the sun and all that. But, you know, when you're, when you're 26, 27, it's, it's a challenge. It's fun. Yeah, well, the, the Pope on Broadway, that's the, the name of the, the, so, the yeah. piece. Yeah. And, and how long did it take you to complete it? Mm, I would say that took about six, five, six months, something like that. Yeah. And what was the response? Um, you know, at, at that time in space, to be honest with you, I got a little bit burnt out on it. You know, I started to get burnt out and I just kind of wanted to, yes, Tuvo, I'm done, next. And then, and then what happened when I finished the mural, I was basically out of money because, <laughs> you know, I didn't, I, I really didn't do my research, right? I didn't know what to really charge my costs, all of that kind of just basic naive, naivete and basically just not taking my time to really research. I was just so excited. Oh my God, I got this monster wall. I want to do it. it. It wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about money at that particular time when the project came along. I was thinking more like, I want to do it. I'm gonna do it, but da, five month, four or five months later, you're like, I'm, I'm running out of money. So I just at, at 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 a certain point, I got burnt out in it on it. I wanted to finish it, but as the years went by, I, I people would come up and say how much the mural meant to them because it became like this generational thing that it'd be like, my mother and my father were such fans of Anthony Quinn, and we would go to the Mercado and then we would see somebody painting this mural and you're the guy who was doing it. And so it became this interesting, like generational thing that families kind of shared with each other. And there was this, you know, they would educate their kids about who Anthony Quinn was. And so it, it, it I started to appreciate it more. All right. Years well, later. Well, it's, I'm going to share this photo. This is a, uh from our, our, the exhibition at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. It's called LA Memo, Chicana, Chicano Artists from 1972 to 1989. Tell us about this piece that, uh, that which came first, the, the, the mural? No, the, 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 the mural, yeah, the mural. And I had met Ultimate. Um, I had gotten to know um, Marquise Lewis Retna, and um, he had put a show together downtown LA. I don't remember the place. And Castudo, Castudo de la Rocha happened to be at this opening. And so Retina introduced us. You know, it was very nice of Retina. And so um, um, we started talking, Castudo, and he goes, oh my God, you're the guy who did the Anthony Quinn mural. Oh, I love Anthony Quinn and blah, 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 blah. And then he said, would you consider doing um, a replica, replica of that painting for, for me? And I go, yeah. So that's how that happened, you know, those things. That and now it's part of the painting. Yeah, now it's part of the Ultimate Art Collection, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, well, let's talk about the, the mural that come that came after that. Uh, what came after that? Let me well, see. Let me show you right now. Here it goes. This is the one you... 
Tell us about this. Oh, okay. I was I was in an, in an exhibit. Uh, it was called uh, Le Demon des Ange uh, exhibit, and uh, yeah, uh, and it was it was put together by this gentleman with the name of Pascal Letelier, and he was working with the French Ministry of Culture at the time, and so he came looking for art Chicano artists from LA. And he came into South L Graphics one time and I was working on some paintings because I was an artist in residence at South L Graphics. And I was thinking it was, must have been 80, I don't know, 87, 88, 89. And uh, he selected some works to, from mine, myself and other artists, you know, uh, Patsy, John Valdez, Patsy Valdez, um, Frank Romero, Gronk, other artists. and. He, he, he put the show together called the Demon de Sange and, and it was exhibited in different uh, uh, galleries in, in, uh, in France. And then off of that, he proposed doing some murals in, um, in this, um, these low housing income areas, communities, right? So um, he invited me to do one in uh, Saint Denis. And so uh, the idea was for me to, for, to go to Saint Denis and uh, uh, integrate with the, the the young people there, find out a little bit about them, and come up with a design. And so uh, it was. It's basically yeah, an all Algerian community, and uh, these are some of the young people that uh, I met. But and that's that's this is Dominique, the young woman here, Dominique. That's me, and that's us up on the wall. And uh, um, oh, when I first got there, it was difficult to get the young people to be excited about wanting to work with me or or assist me because there was a lot of stuff going on between the Algerian community, the, and especially from this community, and and the and the French, uh, and there was a lot of drug activity going on in this area, and so Pascal's idea was to get a Chicano artist to come in and paint a mural in their community, right? In their housing uh, project. And so they have this idea that, oh, a Chicano guy is coming in to paint a mural in our community. And so they had an idea what a Chicano guy looked like or what a Chicano guy was. Because at that time, the movie Colors was out with Sean Penn and those, yes. that, you know, with the band that's different colors and this and that, uh, head scarves and this. And I, 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 I arrive and I'm this guy at the time I had longish hair and, uh, and I'm kind of wetto, you know, and they look at me and they go, huh, are, you're Chicano? And I go, well, we come all different size, shapes, colors, different circumstances. <laughs> and so it was, it was kind of interesting and funny. Uh, and it took the longest time for the kids to want to, want to, you know, just hang and learn something about what I was trying to do, uh, but I had I had I made friends with a few guys. Uh, me, uh, if you if you if you there's one guy. Um, if, if there's any more pictures of the of the of the young people there, let me look. Okay, let and me see if a, I can find this one right here. Maybe this is a, this is the one. Here it goes. No, the, is there another one after that of a no, young that guy? Was, that was it. I think that was number oh, twenty-five. Was yeah. Maybe that was twenty-five. <laughs> anyway, this, this this young guy he would come around. I think his name was. Uh, I think his name was Tariq. I'm not 100% sure. Really nice guy, you know, but he had to kind of like be this tough guy because he's part of that neighborhood and blah, blah, blah. But he was, had his mindset on going to school and doing other things. So he came, he would come to me and he would try to converse and ask me questions like, well, uh, what's, uh, what are you doing here? And what's the idea? And blah, 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 blah. And so we became kind of friends. And then I think he started spreading the word to his buddies. Dude, you know, here's a guy from LA. Here's an opportunity to learn something about what goes on in LA. And you should go talk to this guy and 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 and, and create some kind of dialogue, right? And so little by little, they started coming around. The unfortunate thing is they all came out when I was just about ready to leave. <laughs> you know? and and then they all come around and you know, like that last picture, those pictures that I showed you, that's when they all started coming around. And they started coming around, and the first question they go like, oh. LA is, is good, the beach, the girls, the money, <laughs> things like that. And I'm like, we could have all been talking about this stuff er earlier and asked questions about LA and all this stuff. If, But that's just the way it worked out, you know? And, and there was all this political stuff going on. And I could kind of understand because first of all, they're thinking, 
this guy's not Algerian. They're paying him to do a mural in our community. He's not Algerian. He's not even French, you know? So I, I, I pretty much could understand. Yeah. So, so tell us, what was the, the title of the piece and what um, did it portray? It's called Entrada uh, Mundo Nuevo. And, and the, way, the, the way this composition came about is, okay, when I first got there, this big wall, they put a, 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 a thin kind of like tile material over the surface of this wall, but none of that was ready when I got to France. They, I mean, I they didn't even know where I could buy the acrylic paint or and the wall was ready. So I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna take like, I don't know, four, four or five weeks before they install this material on this wall. So I, I, like, I took off to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Italy and I wanted to, I wanted to go to Florence. I want to see Sistine Chapel and things like that. And then they started freaking out. Well, why aren't you here? And I'm like, the wall's not ready. There's nothing for me to do. What do you, what, I mean, I, I'm here, I want to see things, you know? So I, I went back and I presented a design. I came back seeing all these images of like the Virgin Mary, blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to present like a mother and child and they go, oh, no, 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 no. We don't like it. It's too Christian. It's too, that does not represent us. So then I said, okay, okay, okay. So I, I, I came up with an, another design. Can we go back to the picture? Sure. So I met the, 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 cent the woman in the, in the center. Her name is, uh, is, is Ajera. And she worked in this, in this, in this, um, in this, in this housing project part. What, what she did is she um, educated women that were coming in from Africa because of circumstance, trying to get away from whatever situation they were in over there, or they, they just want to expand themselves. Uh, and she would show them how to apply for jobs, show them basic skills. And uh, she, I became intrigued with her and what she was doing there. And I, I, I asked her, would you mind possibly um, consider if I use your image for the central figure, because she's, she's Algerian and all this community is Algerian. And I asked her if she could dress in the attire, in, uh, in, in some tradi the tradi traditional attire of her region of North Africa. So she came in and it was very intriguing to me the way she was, uh, uh, this traditional attire that she was wearing because it reminded me of native people from New Mexico in a way, there was an interesting connection. And then I, 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 the woman to the left, uh, she's, she's a journalist. So she'd come around and, and inquire about the mural. The guy on the right is, is, and I don't remember her name, but the guy on the right, I remember his name is, is Don Dickshot. And he would come into the community and he would do rap songs about the ills of drugs. You stay away from the drugs and try to better yourselves, education, all that stuff. And then the little child at the bottom is this little brown child and he's the child of the future. And the hand is, it's my hand, the hand of the artist on, 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 this, on this planet. And I brought a, I, I took an image uh, of me of a New Mexico sky. Cause the thing for me that that's magical about New Mexico is its skies. So I wanted to integrate a, a New Mexico sky with the French sky. And these are the entry gates uh, in, into Paris. Oh, that's beautiful. So they, they dug it, they went for it. I said, okay, good. <laughs> happy, to, happy to hear that after all that. <laughs> all right. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about the, what this, uh, this series is about. Let me uh, get to it right now. Uh, give us a little bit of the backstory and uh, we'll show some of the pieces. Okay, that was um, a public project for a local 300 uh, union, union local 300. And um, so I came up with the idea of trying to show laborers of different eras, and uh, and I used I used some of the some of the background. It, this is a combination of silk screen, the the, uh, the architectural uh, images are silk screen, and the figures are hand painted. And this is this is like the Pasadena Bridge, I think, mm -hmm. and the, the first the, one. The, yeah, the Colorado um, Street Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I incorporated, it was kind of a mixed media thing and it was, it was a lot of fun. And this is some tunneling that was going on. Yeah, with the red line. Yeah. And this is my, my friend, Theo. And, and where, where is this, uh, this mural located? Uh, it's, there, there uh, I think there's seven panels and there are, there are about, I don't know, five, a little over five feet by four feet. 
And there's seven of them that are in the interior of the building. And Jesus, where are they? Mm. There, um, Jesus, what is that area? Union, around Union Street and Six, some, somewhere around that area. There, I mean, just look, just look up a local 300 headquarters or whatever. Okay. Find it, yeah. All right. Uh, are the, is this one part of the series as well? No, no, this is a whole different thing. This is a co collaboration thing that I, I that my wife and I did together. Mm -hmm. She's a photographer. And uh, at the time when Trump was president and, you know, the symbol of the American flag, and she saw this image and this, dra this draped building. Now, let's go back. Sure. Now, this draped building that kind of like looked like a Darth Vader uh, with an American flag on it. And it almost looks like a cross on it. And so we, I, we looked at that and I thought, okay, I want to do something and we were kind of thinking of developers and, and uh, 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 marching on and looking for territory, looking to where can we develop? Where money, 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 you know? So it, it was kind of a reaction to what was going on when Trump was president. And was this part of a series? Or yeah, uh, yeah, we... we We'll, we'll assign ourselves once in a while because we like to collaborate. And like I said, it kind of goes back to music. You know, it's fun to collaborate because you feed off of another person and yeah. it's a lot of fun. And so, I don't know, we did maybe four, three or four, three or four pieces. On, right. on uh, what's, your, what's, your, what's your wife's name, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Juliana. Okay. Yuli, Yuli, Juliane in German, Juliane. Oh, fantastic. Okay, I have another, I think this is another series right here. Let me, uh, let me share the screen. All right, tell us about this. Um, we, I was, we were at a, we saw an exhibit at the Rijks Museum uh, in Amsterdam. Of course, you got to see the Rembrandts, right? You, yeah. You're there, you got to see the Rembrandts. I saw the Night Watch and a lot of his pieces, but we went to the contemporary section of the gallery and there was one artist, I guess it was maybe based on the, on the Holocaust. He did these death, a series of death masks, mm. of master death masks and, uh, the way they were aligned, they were aligned in a grid. And the way it was lit, they were almost like strangely beautiful because when you read them as the shells of what was, was, it, was once a human being and contained life in them, but they were dead, you know? And so it just stuck in my mind so much that when I got back to LA, it kind of, it was, it was in my subconscious. And I, I started painting these floating head series. And the idea was to... Um, I started first 10 by 10 floating heads, and then I started get going to the next size, which, was size, which would be 20 by 20, and then 40 by 40, and then I wanted to do some much bigger. And the idea was, um, it's kind of like this universal consciousness, us looking, I don't know, like if you were to look at the, at, at the stars, and you get this sense of perspective, you know what I mean? And you, and you have these these tw twinkles of light, but his his were were masks of, of, of vessels that contain life at one point, right? This other artist, but I want minds to have the life still in them looking at us. And we're kind of have this dialogue of, like if you could look at the universe and the universe is looking back at you because we're kind of the same material, I guess, you know, we're kind of made up of the same stuff basically. So. It was just one of those things that, you know, at, at the moment you have this idea and you kind of run with it. And a lot of times you're trying to figure out what it means and you, you don't particularly have the answer yet, but it's, 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 you, you, you do it. And I would, I mean, my idea is at one point to, because it, it's still continuing, but I haven't had a chance to, to get to it. It is it, it, to it, exhibit at some point where you walk into this space this massive space and you have from 10 inch to 10 inch canvases to 20 by 20 to 40 by 40 to 60 by 80, all the way to colossal type heads. Wow. So that you can walk in and you, oh my God, and you get this feeling of depth, you know, like, like as if you're looking into the universe and conscious, consciousness is looking at you and you're looking at it and you're, there's this weird, interesting dialogue that maybe happens. It's the best way I can explain it of what I was trying to do. So I haven't done the colossal heads, but the biggest one I have now, I think is six by six. 
but I, I would love to do some that maybe get to like 10 by 10, 12 by 12. But I mean, you have to have a, a, a monster space to pull that off. And I don't know if that's possible to, to, to have a monster space as willing to do it, you know. But it's an idea. It's, it's a con to be continued piece. And no, but uh, uh, I'm going to show another series. And these are portraitures. Uh, yeah. One of the, 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 the genres or, or, or that you're most known for is your portraitures. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and just the way that you compose them, the, the, with the, the sitting, most of them are sitting as, I, as we'll, we'll see. Tell us how these came to be and, and how you choose who to, to, uh, to portray in your pieces. Well, actually these, I, I saw um, at the Alley County though, David Hockney did an exhibit. Uh, it's called 82, it was 80, uh, for his 82nd birthday, I guess. They, they did an exhibit called 82 Portraits and One Still Life. Did you see that exhibit? No, I didn't. Yeah. And I, I, I needed to see it because it, well, it's David Hockney. You know, he's, he's, he's an incredible uh, figurative uh, uh, painter. So I went to see it. And at first I was, I was a little bit like, okay, they're, they're, they're kind of nice. They're, they're, the colors are a little too much for me. And we all have our, our first reactions to something. It's like when you listen to a song, you might like, ah, it's okay. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, a week later, you're like, I love that song, you know? Yeah. And so David Hockney is, is tricky because I went in there and I go, ah, they're too bright. The colors are, it looks like, it looks like Photoshopped too bright colors. And I, I'm more, I like subtle colors for me, you know? Uh, but he really reeled me in. And then what I started uh, realizing about those series is, which da, of course, he was kind of showing the world he navigates in, his friends, the, the side of the fence that he's on, so to speak. So he's on that side of the fence. I'm on this side of the fence. So I thought, I'm going to do what he did, but I'm going to show my side of the fence. And I, at first I started, and people that I know, friends that I know, uh, uh, people that are collectors, people that bought art, people that are friends, people that are acquaintances that I just think are intriguing, interesting subjects. And uh, well, this is Rigo, by the way. He's a, he's a gallery director. Um, and... Uh, so th that was basically the, the idea. And I started, at first I started, I, I bought some oil pastels and I thought, I'm just gonna do these loops like David Hockney. But it's one of those things where I ended up going back to what I kind of know, because you're always trying to find ways. I don't know if I'm done yet, if I've exhausted yet, trying to learn how to get better mm -hmm. and kind of what I know, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's a lifetime thing where you can never, you know, it, you'll never be satisfied. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I started a really loose, I, I bought these oil pastels and the oil, pa these particular ones that I bought were taking forever to dry. So I didn't, I didn't like them. And so I ended up going back to uh, painting more uh, realistically with these. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I ended up calling it uh, Shades of Us because the idea was kind of you know, like being in LA, to me, LA is so contemporary because there's, it's so diverse. And that's what I love about Los Angeles, you know? And I, I wanted to, to say something about LA and its people. And, and my time in, on this planet, the, my, the time that I'm here, people that I encounter, people that I get to know, I, 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 I wanna, it's, it's like, I feel like a fly on the wall. I'm documenting people that I encounter, that I meet. Oh, this is uh, Carrie Marshall. No, those are, they're all remarkable. And, and of course, some recognizable figures here, if you're in the, like you say, they're collectors, Ricardo Munoz. Yeah, Ricardo, yeah, and it's, yeah, it's with his son's jacket. Yeah. And this, yeah, yeah, his son's jacket, he's, 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 he's very proud of his, he's a very family oriented guy, you know, he's, he, he, he's, that's his passion. And uh, so I needed to uh, portray him in that. And, and, and who is this? Jim Sanchez, he's, um, He's a, a, a National Guard by, in the Navy. And so he collects Chicano art. And Betty Avila. Yeah, the, the executive director of Self-Help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was, I was an, an artist in residence when Sister Karen was there. Wow. So it was kind of like, okay, this, she's the executive director now. It's an, it's, it's just, I just like tying things together. And then uh, Rigo, uh, East, Rigo, Eastern Projects. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this woman was, um, 
she was in charge of, I don't know to ex exactly to what capacity she was in charge of, but she was at, at uh, she was putting together in some capacity, the uh, exhibit, uh, uh, Students of Charles White exhibit at, at the, uh, at, at the uh, uh, Otis Art Institute, the old Otis Art Institute near MacArthur Park Gallery. And so I, I, I met her, she was there and, and she had this t-shirt and I started inquiring, asking her questions about her. She's young. She kind of reminded me when I first got to Otis, you know, because in your head, you, you start doing these, putting these things together because it's fun. You know, you, you like to, to create these little scenarios in your head. Okay. She's young. She's at Otis. I was young at one time I was at Otis. She's on my old stomping grounds. Oh, what do you, what, what do you do? And I started inquiring and it turns out that she's, she's lived in New York. She's lived in Mexico. She's lived in LA. She's involved in the, in, in the art world. And so I'm, I'm already thinking of her as this person who's going to be somebody really important in the art world. And, and she's Latina, you know what I mean? And so I just, in my head, I started, and, I, and the Angelino New Yorker just broke, to me, all, all those stereotypes that we, we just stay in our backyard. You know what I mean? That the world is, is big out there and she's out there doing it. And so that was just one of those moments where I wanted to encapsulate all those kind of ideas and thoughts into one image, which was her. Fantastic. So, so, so tell us, uh, we're at the hour. We appreciate the time that you've spent with us. Uh, what's, what's, what's coming up next? I'm working on a, on a, on a, on a really fun project that I'm, I'm really enjoying, but it's, it's kicking my butt a little bit. It's, it's, it's very, um, uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of man hours. Um, I, I'm not at liberty to disclose that yet because they need to publicize it first before I can. Sure. But, but uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited about it. It's, it's, a, it's gonna high, a high profile project. And so uh, I'm hoping by the end of the month, I can announce it. Well, fantastic. Well, you, have, you have a place to announce it here. Just let us know and we'll- I definitely will. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely put it on our social media and so on. Well, Eloy, this has been fantastic. I really enjoy, I've enjoyed your work for a while. I was familiar well, with you. some of your, your mm -hmm. of course, most well-known pieces, the Pope of Broadway, uh, the, the portrait that you did of, of Herbert Siguenza with, with okay. the crown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. but, uh, but the, the breadth of your, of your work is, is astounding. The craftsmanship, the, the talent that you have is, 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 Thank you for sharing it. Well, uh, thank you for asking me to do this Zoom. It's, I had a lot of fun. All right, I appreciate it. All right, well, uh, if any questions, we have uh, the chat, a, a couple more minutes to go. Uh, thank you for joining us, Maria Carrillo here on Facebook land, uh, Monica Mendoza, Sonia Guzman Gonzalez uh, here on, uh, on Zoom. Uh, if you didn't catch this entire program or if you want to watch it again we'll be posting it on our youtube page at la plaza la also on our website lapca.org and of course it's on our facebook page along with all the other 200 plus sessions that we've done uh this one is in conjunction with our current exhibition there at la plaza la memo uh chicana chicano art from 1972 to 1989 done in collaboration with the Ultimate Art Collection, uh, co-curated Rafael Martinez Barrientos, or Mar uh, Rafael Barrientos Martinez, and our curators there at, uh, at La Plaza, headed by Karen uh, Cruz Hendon, our senior curator, and the rest of our crew. Uh, it's a fabulous exhibit. Uh, I invite you all to check it out. We have uh, Sonia Guzman says, thank you, El Eloy Torres, when I was a kid, in the 80s, I always admired the Victor clothing mural. My dad used to buy his suits and clothes there. And uh, and whatever happened to all of that? I know yours is still up there. You did a, a, if not a restoration, at least, you know, you worked on it maybe about, I'd say about 10, 15 years ago. Is that correct? You mean the restoration of the antique? Yeah. yeah. You know, that was about five years ago. About five four, years ago. Four or five years ago, yeah. Fairly right. recent. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a pretty good shape. It should should be there for another good while if, oh, if, if nothing if the building's still around you know you never know with all the you know, development you know. that's going on and yeah you never know no he's, uh, unfortunately uh, los angeles used to be the mural capital of the world yeah. uh 
the powers that be or the powers that 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 aren't uh yeah. did not uh, uh ha did not have the foresight to really put something in place to to keep these murals alive for all of us to enjoy but yours is and we appreciate that yeah well yeah, it's there for now you know we know nothing lasts forever that's 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 the way it goes right right that's but right we, we, we try and enjoy the moment as much as we can and and be in the moment there you go well you have uh until august the i believe it's august the 18th to come to la plaza de cultura y artes and check out the the painting the pope on broadway along with uh 50 other pieces by 30 plus artists uh from that from 72 to 89 well known some of the ones you mentioned john valadez patsy valdez uh, uh carlos almaraz uh th they're there for you all of us to enjoy uh let, let you know what's coming up on in casa con la plaza here's our calendar for the week that today was uh the the talk with eloy torres tomorrow at la plaza de cultura y artes we have a, a platica voices of the moratorium Cultural Influences of the Moratorium. We'll be talking on the panel with, with David Botteo, with uh, Carlos Montes, with uh, Rosalio Munoz is going to be there, Oscar Castillo, uh, Jesus Chuy Velo. Uh, come on up. It's at 7 o'clock. We'll have a little coffee, a little cafecito, a little bit of pastries there for you to enjoy while we're discussing the cultural influences of the, of the Moratorium. On Friday here on Encasa, uh, virtually, uh, we have Den Guerrero Happy Hour with Eden Espinosa. She's a Broadway star of Wicked and Rent, among other productions. She'll be uh, with us uh, from Anaheim, California, to Broadway. And then finally, this Sunday, Dia de los Niños Family Day with art, uh, culinary, and uh, garden workshops for the children and for families. Uh, on stage, we'll have Ballet Folklorico. And then also a special, it, this is co, uh, it, it's uh, sponsored by the Department of Cultural Affairs and then also Co-America Bank. And uh, a special um, setting there with, uh, with Dr. Uh, Sandoval, uh, who will be collecting letters from people who uh, were either written to or wrote from the Vietnam War. We have another, our other exhibition is called Patriotism in Conflict, Fighting for Country and Comunidad and it deals with the Vietnam era. And this is a special collection that if you have anybody out there have letters from uh, conocidos or, or, or friends from uh, that, that were in the Vietnam War, we'd like to for you to bring them. We'll be digitizing them and, and we're, it'll be part of an oral and written history. So that's it with it for En Casa Con La Plaza uh, tonight. Thank you to our sponsors. Union Pacific Foundation, the Institute for Museum and Library Services. Uh, thanks to all of you that joined us tonight, and uh, we'll see you soon. Eloy, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Take care.